Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the 21st Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Matthew Charlesworth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And welcome to everybody, especially those of you at home, as we celebrate the 21st Sunday in Ordinary Time. As we are about to give thanks for our faith, we also humbly admit the defects of our own faith. Lord, our faith is not as firm as the faith of Peter, it is often timid and shaky. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, we do not confess our faith in you as clearly as Peter confessed it. At times we have hidden our faith. At times we have even denied it. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, when difficulties crop up, we do not always remain convinced that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Let us glorify the Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, Grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. We make this prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shebna, who is over the household, I will thrust you from your office, and you will be cast down from your station. In that day, I will call my servant Elikiam, the son of Hilkiah, and I will clothe him with your robe and will bind your belt on him, and will commit your authority to his hand, and he shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. And I will place on his shoulder the key of the house of David. He shall open and none shall shut. 
and he shall shut, and none shall open. And I will fasten him like a peg in a show place, and he will become a throne of honor to his father's house. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O Lord, your merciful love is eternal. Discard not the work of your hands. O Lord, your, your merciful, merciful love is eternal. eternal. Discard, Discard not, not the work of your hands. hands. I thank you, Lord, with all my heart. You have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I praise you. I bow down toward your holy temple. O oh Lord, your, your merciful, merciful love is eternal. eternal. Discard, Discard not the work of your hands. hands. I give thanks to your name. For your merciful love and your faithfulness, you have exalted your name and your promise over all. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased the strength of my soul. O oh Lord, your, your merciful love is eternal. eternal. Discard not, not the, the work of your hands. hands. The Lord is high, yet he looks on the lowly, and the haughty he knows from afar. O oh Lord, your merciful love is eternal. Discard not the work of your hands. O oh Lord, your merciful love is eternal. Discard not the work of your hands. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depths of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Or who has been given a gift to him that he might be repaid? For him and through him, and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. At that time, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do men say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah and others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. 
Then he strictly charged the disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we are asked to contemplate authority and to pray for those in authority. Authority is legitimate power. And in our readings today, we see how certain individuals are legitimized and what power is given to them by the ultimate authority, the one whom Peter calls the Messiah, the Son of the living God, Jesus Christ. There are two images used in our readings today that originated in the Old Testament, were picked up in the New Testament, and continue to be applied to the Christian community today. Those two images are the rock and the keys, which represent, I think, the power and legitimacy of authority. The rock refers to faith in God, which is the believer's superpower, if you will. In the Psalms, God is often referred to as the rock, meaning the foundation that one can depend on unconditionally. God's word, especially in Scripture, is seen to be trustworthy. And St. Paul tells us that the rock was Christ when God's word became flesh. In this morning's gospel, Jesus allows Simon Peter and the future leaders of the church to share in that quality when he says, you are the rock, and on this rock I will build my church. Christ's church will also participate in this quality of unconditional trustworthiness, since we're told that the gates of Hades will not prevail against her. But it was not Peter's own doing that allowed him to recognize Christ. It was his faith, which was a gracious gift from God. Such faith is the foundation upon which Christ builds his church. So what each of us is being asked today to consider this morning is the quality of our own faith. Who do we say Jesus is? The second image that is used is that of the keys, which represent the power to open and close. But notice it is the keys given to a specific person. No skeleton key exists whereby someone else might also be able to open and close. We believe that this applies to all who share in the priestly office derived from the apostles. Only the appointed pastor of a congregation and his assistants can have the keys, which he may not lend or share with anyone else. Just as Eliakim in today's first reading was entrusted with the keys over the royal household, Peter was promised the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Implied in this is a responsibility of religious leadership that throughout history has been exercised in the church by bishops and in a special way by the Pope. But as we consider these two images representing faith and authority, let us notice three things. The first is that it is a mistake to believe that if we ever had any doubts, or doubt even now, that somehow our faith is weak. Doubt is not the opposite of faith. It is but one element of it. Because the opposite of faith is not doubt. It is certainty. For Peter, Jesus recognized that it was not flesh and blood that revealed Christ to him, but Jesus' Father in heaven. If we are looking to increase faith in our life, we must ask God the Father to send us his grace. The second is to notice how after Jesus gave Peter a new name and this power of the keys, that he still accompanied him. Jesus knew who Peter was and what he would do later. Remember, Peter would be the man who would later doubt and deny even knowing Jesus. And that is why Jesus forgave him so that his mercy and compassion would be the model for Peter's authority in the church. His was not a power to rule over, but a strength to serve as Christ did. Let's recall the image of Jesus washing the feet, or suffering for our sake, so that we might be saved. That is the example of leadership. A final point to notice 
is found in our second reading. Paul concludes his meditation on how God on the last day will act to save not only those who believe in Christ, but also the Israelites who had not recognized Jesus. Paul exalts that God is so great in giving this plan of salvation that it is above all human conception. The more we learn about our world, its complexities and grandeur, the more we realize that only God could have revealed God's self to us. Quoting Isaiah and perhaps Job, Paul rhetorically asks what human could have been so wise as to advise God what to do. Only God's infinite mercy and love could have bestowed such grace and compassion to be as inclusive as to desire to save all of us. As our understanding has evolved, we have as a church come to see how God is concerned not just with ourselves, but with all creation. We must care as God cares for us. For as we heard in the psalm, God's faithfulness and love excel all we ever knew of the God who authentically desires us. But it is authenticity that makes power legitimate. Just as Jesus was authentic with Peter and Peter with Jesus, we are invited today to be authentic with God and to allow God to be authentic with us. We are asked the same intimate question. Who do you say I am? Can we listen to God's response to us that we are his beloved? Let's pray for our leaders, the ones Jesus has legitimized as having the authority to serve God's people, that they might receive God's grace and compassion so that they might share it with us too. Let's pray that they continue to wield the power of the keys to forgive us and to save us so that the kingdom of heaven is opened to us. Corruption is a scourge not only among leaders in our society, but at every level. Let's pray for a conversion and repentance of corruption and all in authenticity, that just as in the first reading, God will raise up new leaders who will serve him faithfully. Let's pray that all our leaders might pattern their exercise of power on the one whom we with Peter proclaim to be Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior and our God. Amen. And as Peter confessed his faith, let us profess ours in the same God, as we say in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, he descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Like St. Peter, we have professed our faith in God. Let us now present all our prayers to God, our Almighty Father. For our Pope Francis and all our bishops, priests and deacons, that they may preach God's word humbly and sincerely. Lord, hear us. 
Lord, graciously hear us. For all in positions of authority, in church and state, that they may serve with gentleness and love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who have suffered through the abuse of power in the church and the state, that healing and new strength may be theirs. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the leaders of the church who have died and all the faithful departed, that they may be part of the family of God in Father's house. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our own needs, for those who have asked our prayers, whom we remember now. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God of love, like Peter, we come to know you in faith. In that faith, we bring to you these prayers for ourselves and others, through Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for our praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all His holy church. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption, through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners. And he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so, with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. 
And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said, uh, and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Buti Tlachale and Duncan Soke are bishops, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, Saint Ignatius and all the saints. We shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look, not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. And I wish you all a blessed week and peace in your homes and in your communities 
and in your workplaces. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord with our lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.